Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm here to present our project. I spoke earlier at the panel. I'm here to present our project, the Open Data Exchange. So it's the first time I am presenting a deck that's uh, in Korean. So what problem are we really trying to solve? Uh, and how large is the market that uh, will uh, benefit once we solve this problem? Uh, unbeknownst to many, 80% of all internet users in the world live in an emerging market. And the problem with that 80% is that 85% uh, of the time, they are not online through paid mobile data. Of course, they use the internet to their phones. Why? There aren't that many free public Wi-Fi spots available. Mobile data is expensive, and DSL, landline, home access uh, is also unaffordable for most of them. This is a problem that exists across multiple emerging markets, not just my home country, the Philippines. So if you see in the chart, the total green bar is how much you would need to spend in that country to have unlimited fast internet access. The dark shade of green uh, in the bar is how much the average consumer in that market spends on internet access. So you can see there is a very large disparity. For the wealthy people in emerging markets, they can be online every day, 30 days a month, seven days a week for 24 hours. However, for 95% of the population, they are only online on the average five out of every 30 days. Clearly not a, something you experience here in South Korea. So uh, the belief is if you have a strong business model, you should be able to make more money by making your service available 30 out of 30 days. Perhaps your consumers are not able to spend for internet access, but we believe publishers can. A publisher with a good business model would, should make more money if their consumers spend more time with them, whether you're an app, a website, a game, an e-commerce site, a media site. So your store is open 30 out of 30 days versus five out of 30 days, you should make more money. Earlier this year, we piloted a platform called Make Free where we took our services and we partnered with different publishers, app owners, website owners, and essentially any consumer that uses our services and our partner services to our platform they do not pay for the internet access, we do. And the results were quite staggering. We found that for every 100 gigabytes of data that we sponsored, we drove $18,000 worth of transactions, and our users, our publishers, our partners, ourselves, we were able to acquire 3,000 new users. The cost to acquire a paying user went from $4 to 8 US cents. Affiliate fee percentage, uh, uh, revenue shares also went down significantly from 6% to 1.35%. Simply providing free internet access to make your service available every day, 24 hours a day, we found is much more effective than just spending on online advertising. What happened though was those same publishers and partners said, Nix, you know, our service is free to surf on your platform, but majority of our users go directly to our own apps and they go directly to our own websites. How do we make those free to surf as well? That's when we created our project, the Open Data Exchange. So I won't dive too deeply in here, but essentially there are two components to ODX. There's the B2B portion, and there's the B2B2C portion. Let me jump quickly to the B2B portion. This is very straightforward. I mentioned earlier in our panel 
The problem with the centralized approach to this is the central authority gets to choose which publishers and which internet service providers can participate in an ecosystem like ours. With our approach, you can be a publisher that's very large, or you can be a publisher that's a new startup without that many users. You can connect to any internet service provider, whether the internet service provider is a giant telecom company or a smaller internet service provider to make your service free to access the user at the same rate. We do not discriminate. But there is also a B2B2C portion. So what happens is a percentage of all our transactions will be deposited as tokens in a reserve. Those tokens in the reserve are then distributed through our partner publishers to be given out to all of their consumers. So imagine I'm surfing an e-commerce site. I'm told, Nix, thank you for surfing our e-commerce site and shopping using our services the last 30 days. Here are 50 pesos worth of ODX coins. However, to claim it, you need to claim it in our wallet. So register your identity in our wallet. And in our wallet, you will be able to use the coins to pay for data services for the products and services you want to use. The number one business model on the internet today is called the freemium business model. Netflix, Spotify, all these mobile games, you are free to use them, but then at some point, advertisers come in or you hit a paywall. But to an emerging market user, there is no such thing as a freemium business model. Every time I want to play a game that's multiplayer, I have to separately buy internet access to play that game. Every time I want to read the news website, I have to separately buy the internet access to surf that news website. In our wallet, you will be able to spend your coins to pay for access to the products and services on the internet that you love. So the company behind it, uh, I started it back in 2001 with just $1,350 of paid up capital. Uh, we grew the business without raising venture capital money, uh, not even taking loans from friends, family, or any institution. Eventually, we grew the company to be the largest technology company in the Philippines, and uh, we started acquiring a number of tech companies around the region. That's why we're very familiar with many different technology verticals and spaces, games, e-commerce, digital advertising, and so on. So if you guys are interested to collaborate, participate, uh, somehow work with us, please email me. I'm nix at odx.network. Love to engage with the uh, community here in South Korea uh, and looking to bring your products and services to emerging markets such as ours. Thank you, everyone.